Hi guy, time for my fifth episode or fifth day of the Japan video blog. Uh, today I went out to um, uh, the Meiji Shrine, which a lot of you probably know on various films and uh, TV specials about Japan. It's, 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 it's usually used as a backdrop for anything that needs to look a bit a bit ancient. It was. Uh, Slap bang in the middle of, of, a, of a park, beginning with a K, I can't remember the name on the top of my head. As with a lot of things in Japan, it's a very long, very complicated name, so I'm not even going to try guessing at the moment. Um, very interesting, on the way up to the uh, the main shrine, which is where we were headed mainly for, there was a lot, sort of like a little side path leading off to the, uh, like a royal, royal garden for the uh, empress in around about, it was 1900 Empress Hon. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, it was very interesting. Just to, you had to pay about 500 yen, which is uh, about the cost of a happy meal. So it was a bit expensive, but uh, you did get to see various places like uh, a reconstruction of a tea house that was used back in the day. Um, the the various paths, uh, a, a pond with uh, various Japanese fishing, which were incredibly. Um, Curious and eager. I think I'll try and put some on, onto this video. They will come right up to the edge of the, the dock area where we were uh, and stare at the piles of them. Uh, yeah, and there was also a well further on up in in that that section, but we couldn't get to that because there was like an, it looked like about an hour's worth of queuing just for a single well. So we just gave it a miss uh, before moving on to the main shrine. Now the main shrine was interesting. It was absolutely huge. I couldn't believe like, the size of the wooden gates, you know. They, it was literally, it was like two trees on either side, and we're talking, it looked like they'd been taken slap bang out the middle of, of Oaks, the big thing going over, and then you go through the door, and you'd, um, you had to wash your hands in some sort of like temple thing, and then gargle some of the water and spit it back out. I mean, my mate wasn't having any of that, so it was all left down to me. And just to add insult to injury, I saw quite a few people were, dr were drinking some of the water as well, not spitting it out. So well, I thought I'd give that a try, and oh, it tasted disgusting. It was clean, but you know. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, you went inside the shrine, you could uh, write a little prayer on a again for I think it was around 500 yen, so it's uh, one temple trying to make a quite a bit of money there. And then they would then copy your message out onto a little plaque, which will be like pinned up on this board, which will then the very next day go on to the main temple prayers. So most of them were Japanese, but a few were in English. It was just people um, grateful for how things were and what they want from the future, and you know, like well wishing stuff. And I didn't bother with it because, well, there was just there was too big a queue, and <laughs> I didn't really know what to write. So you know, what do you do? So uh, yeah, I think that was pretty much it. I mean, after after that train, we then went uh, southwards and out of the park because we were looking for a place in the guidebook known as uh, I think it was J Junbashi Bridge or, or Jungai Bridge. I guess this is supposed to be a place where um, all the teenage cosplayers go and just just hang out. And, and from all the stuff I've seen of cosplay in the past, it's, it's nothing that really interests me. But I thought it'd be interesting to see is is you know a, a bit of the culture of Japan, but. No matter where we went, we couldn't find it, and it was a slap bang in the middle of this, uh, I think it was Yoyogi Park in the guidebook. But when we were walking around there, it must have been there for a good 40 minutes. Quite a big place, and I even bumped into the uh, park rangers, two of them, and, and though they couldn't speak English, they were, it was pretty clear they were saying there's no such bridge in this park, so we were completely stumped and just had to leave it. And uh, yeah, it was, it was getting quite a late afternoon then, so we... Uh, on the, on the way back to the station to go on, we stopped in this uh, English pub, which I have taken uh, pictures of, which you'll see. It's a very, very good re re recreation. Um, I had a fish and chips in there. You had to do it in an English pub. I thought it was a laugh. And uh, it was actually quite delicious, you know. It wasn't really up to what we would call an English pub, but then we tend to just uh, stick everything in a big fryer and destroy any sort of taste in it. It wasn't like that. You know, it wasn't like that. Oh, they were actually quite tasty. Uh, yeah, then what happened next? We we came back, uh, and it was getting quite. I said, it was getting about half three, getting a bit dark. So I just hung around the hotel for a bit, checked my emails. That's another thing. I, I do have email access in the hotel. I've been able to get onto uh, Google Mail and all my home stuff. But the weird thing is, because I'm in Japan, 
the IP address of a lot of sites um, let's say you go to Google it automatically recognizes you as being in Japan so it it sets all of the, like, the page in Japanese now with Google it's not too bad because a slap bang at the bottom right you've got a little hyperlink that says you know set this page to English so you you know you can do it and use Google as normal but like at one time like YouTube just wouldn't let me wouldn't let me change it and no matter which hyperlink I clicked I couldn't seem to get it to go back to English uh, or you know so I'm completely, I'm completely stumped I'm not, not able to look at YouTube at all besides the fact I'm getting messages at the moment which is a bit of a shame but yeah after, after doing that the uh, the next plan was to visit another famous place which I'm sure you, you, you may have seen but not know the name of which is the uh, Shibaya Crossing that's S-H-I-B-U-Y-A and basically this is the main like neon lit up crossing in Japan uh, and, and uh, the, the crossing is like a box shape going round and then in the middle you've got this going on and uh, during rush hour uh, there's just like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people just pile across these lights whenever the the walk, uh, you know, the, the walk sign comes on it's just an incredible sight I'm taking a video of it and, like, and some pictures to, to show off but you know I've seen it um, on the internet before and seen pictures of it and you know, we don't take much notice of it, but I, I could promise you that when I saw that up close, it was just. I, I mean, we went, we went over it a couple of times because you have to go through the area to get to different bits, and uh, it was just, it was just incredible. Uh, one other thing we did do whilst we were there is we uh, went to McDonald's, and again, I, I know we shouldn't be doing this, but it, it was late, we were hungry, and a problem with a lot of the Japanese food is it's very snack like and if you're not sure what exactly what you're after you can get something really disgusting quite easily and you know just ruin your evening meal so we were starving we wanted something quick because I'm Mackie D's again uh, it's got the usual quarter pounder but one thing I did notice this is a completely McDonald's to the ones I've experienced elsewhere in Tokyo and Usually, you know, you go in McDonald's, you see the burger on the on the, the sign above the uh, the counter, and what you get is just it's all squashed up and it's it's horrible minging. Not in the Japanese ones; they are spot on. They are they are excellent. And when it says 100% beef, it, it's 100% premium beef. And I've never been out to say this about a McDonald's hamburger before, but it was actually succulent and well cooked. It was an amazing, absolutely amazing burger to have from there. So if you're ever in Japan, put McDonald's at the top of your list. It's just got to be done. And uh, yeah, I mean, what else else I going to talk about? I have started to notice something about the uh, uh, the trains, I suppose it were. Um, uh, there's a lot of stories about how rampacked they get during during the rush hours, and it's all true. You know, I've seen it up, up, up close up, and I was in, in the middle of it tonight. But at the same time, the people are just so incredibly polite, and and you know they'll step aside, and, and if they barge into you, they they, they will go out of the way to apologise and, and do something about it. It's not like in my own country, they they just push you out of the way and, and you know be off off, and, and that'll be the end of it. Uh, they yeah, really are a great, great people of what I've seen so far. I think I've said this before, but when I first got here, the, the nicest they get to me to a bit, but I think that's more of my own cynical <laughs> cynical approach and what I'm used to in, in my own home country. So, yeah, it was, it was great to see.